Hello, this is Ex Nihilo, and we're going to finish our Boffer weapon. I had left you where I had cut out uh, combat tips, um, and I glued those and put those on. And we had filled in this end with silicone caulking that is now dry. I'm going to take a little square piece of blue foam and, I've, and get that in there. And our tip is now complete. And now I have give in the tip, but I have protection from the silicone, because uh, the silicone can get hard. Um, I've contact cemented all of uh, this, and I've contacted and cemented a EVA foam ring. Now, do you see how I've put the seam together? Um, you can certainly put a seam together end to end, but getting the cut proper and correct is very difficult to get it perfect. And it actually increases the amount of stress on the joint. If you put an end together like this, oftentimes you can round this out so that it doesn't show any difference. So that's what we're going to do here. As you can see, there's a little space back there, but that doesn't matter. But we'll eventually round and cut this off. In fact, I think we will do a rough cut right now. Okay, it seems as though we're here. Let's take a piece of EVA foam. Contact cement the edge, contact cemented the top there, and sometimes I like to line this up with the blade. So, something like right there. Okay, it is absolutely imperative, in my opinion, to have a padded pommel. Um, a, a, one of the groups I was with the one friend had a particular type of sword, and it was a manufactured sword with no pommel on the end. It just had a rubber boot. And he swung down with his sword. My other friend came up underneath his arm just at the same time. He didn't know she was there. She got a pommel to the side of the head completely by accident. And that wouldn't have been a big deal if there was just a little bit of EVA foam on the end. So that's why I require that in um, our game. Um, where are we? So we have EVA foam. I'm going to put contact cement along the bottom edge where it contacts the blue foam. And lay this into place. Making sure that I'm I'm even. And then uh, we're going to do a little added bonus. And we're going to wrap this right around. And put that in. Now, that is a piece of fiberglass cloth that I have saturated in. Um, contact cement and I like to use some of this foam and I'll lay it there and contact cement that both sides get it right in there and then put it aside to dry for later you can even make a couple of these if you're planning on doing a lot of creation um, so make sure that gets pushed in there nice and well make a good contact especially down in that edge and now you have extra added reinforcement um, so this thing will not twist. We're going to add our ends in and we have contact cemented some of the outside areas. We don't want to just contact cement our main face. We want to get contact cement all around and we want to really squish those joints into place when we put those in. I'm going to do that with this one. There's contact cement on both sides of it, along as this edge, partially on this edge, even partially down there. 
really squish those edges in. You can see I wasn't close enough there. I'm going to really squish that in. Only worried about basic form right now because later on we're going to be uh, cutting and forming all of the rest. I have another piece here. We're going to lay that in there for a little bit more structure. Really work that in. Don't worry about fibers sticking out. Your knife will cut right through it. Later on, I'm looking for my contact cement joint. I'm going to put, make sure that is up against the blue foam. And right now, there's a certain amount of time that if it's bent, you can kind of work it and work all of your seams into place. The more pressure on that, the better. Okay, really work all of your seams in. This is a critical moment where you can really get that contact well. Now, we have a general blank shape of a sword. Okay. Now's the time to figure out what your sword is going to look like. So, I suggest you have a paper and a pencil and work out what the basic cuts of my sword will be. So, do I want a sword that tilts up like so, then I can see the different cuts that I make. Now if I make this even a 3D model, and you think of your picture as a 3D model, I know I have to make a cut right here, I have to make a cut right there, and so that's going to give me an idea of what I'm looking for on this, and I can plan out the shape that I need to cut. Maybe I want to make a shape that looks more like this. I know that I have to get rid of these pieces here. Okay, maybe I want a sword with a, a knuckle guard, so I know that I need to add a piece of foam down here. Okay, so plan it out on paper and try to see in the 3D so that you can then transfer it to foam. Right now we're just going to go with a simple design. I think that what I want to do is I want to tilt, because we have a steampunk type of attitude to our game, I want to make it look like it's pieced together by... Um, maybe some scrap metal or, or something like that. So I'm going to put another layer right over that. And, but for now, let's trim and our pommel. It depends on what we want. I kind of like this sectional piece because when it's Spray foamed, it will look kind of like a bolt, but just so, to show you how I would uh, finish off in order to make a round pommel, we'll do something like that. Give myself an edge. Maybe come all the way around. And right now we're still thinking on basic, oops, sorry about that. We're still thinking on basic shapes, because we're going to be sanding all of this later. Okay. I can 
cut that out. Sorry about that. All right. So now I can make my shapes. Might come into here. This brings me to another point. At the base of my weapon, I say about six inches from the base of my cross guard. I tend to allow some cutouts for maybe some added decoration. Um, I'm going to do something like this. When we make our design on our sword, whether or not we followed our paper, we want to really trace out the lines that we want to cut. Okay. So I'm going to be able to do something like that. Maybe I will set up for a knuckle guard in the future. Just do something funky so that uh, you can see how we do it. All right. Now, I might use this. I don't really like these knives quite so much. So, I'm going to go back to my normal method and use my saw. All of this I'm going to be finishing off later on with a rasp. The reason why we're doing a rasp is because you can do a Dremel, but I'm trying to show you the basic tools, the very basic stuff. You can certainly get better tools, and I have the better tools, but I want you to be able to find what you need around your house and be able to put out a good looking weapon. Okay. Notice, I can't break that because I have fiberglass in there. Okay, there we go. So there's our basic shape. I don't want to get too complicated because you guys are watching me do this. But um, So now that I have this, I'm going to work into... My shape. Now, this is uh, something, this is the cheapest way to go. Uh, you can see I have a flat and it's slightly rounded on one side and flat on the other. And I have a round rasp here. And with both of these rasps, I can finish EVA foam quite well without needing a, uh, a Dremel, without needing electricity, if I'm, if I'm making it on camp. And I can get this pretty well. It's not going to be as smooth as, as Dremel work, but once we get it to basic shape, we'll switch over to, uh, to a piece of sandpaper, and it'll come out pretty well. Um, and the rest of it. Okay, I'm going to sand this up, and I'll be back in one minute. 